I want to introduce you to Leslie Ann Scorgi, who's a personal finance expert. You've probably heard her name. She's the author of a number of books, including Well Healed, The Smart Girl's Guide to Getting Rich, The Modern Couple's Money Guide. She's in Toronto with us now. And Leslie Ann, I want to say thank you, number one, for joining us for the next four hours, because I know we're going to get a lot of questions from our viewers. This is a key area. Good morning. Good morning. And here we have you coming in just after that news that I announced at the beginning of our broadcast of 5,000 Air Canada plus Air Canada workers, flight attendants who are, are receiving layoff notices. These are just some of what are projected to be massive job numbers affected by these economic times and even talk of a recession. But just overall, as you look at the job market and the economic picture and you have a background in finance, what are you seeing and thinking lies ahead for us? So most professional investment advisors agree on a few things right now. Uh, things are going to be tough. There's going to be more layoffs. And we're probably going to see a lot of volatility yet to come in the market. You talked a little bit about the futures being strong this morning, and that generally is a good indicator of how the day is going to play out. But what we can expect right now is a bit of a yo-yo in the market. We're going to have days that are stronger than others. And as an investor and as an employee, you're going to have to hold on for the ride. Now, here's the thing. When you are looking at your own job security, and if you are looking at facing some kind of job loss, like our many thousands of Air Canada flight attendants who are now going to be out of work in short order, there are some benefits that are coming down uh, through the government aid package. And those benefits are being made available through the system that we call employment insurance. So that can be tapped, and that is the, the method that the government has chosen to use to deploy massive amounts, billions of dollars, into the hands of Canadians. Because that's really the key right now, is we have to get money to Canadians right away. And this method is one of the most um, efficient ways to get money to those who have been affected by job loss um, or potential job loss in the not too distant exactly. future. Exactly. That's what we were talking to the finance minister about yesterday, although it's going to be two or three weeks at the earliest and in some cases on into April and into May. So Canadians will not have cash in hand right away when they need it. But we're going to talk to you about uh, what to do with shoring up that cash, preparing for perhaps a very long extended economic downturn. I just want to, we're going to solicit questions from our viewers. Don't have any to begin with you right at our first conversation. So I want to go to what you just put up online, uh, your most recent blog on this very issue. And it gives some fantastic advice. And I think it's a good point for us to start our conversation today. You said at the conclusion of this, the financial bottom line for all of us is to be extremely careful with our precious resources. Can you explain what what your overall advice is, Leslie Ann? So generally speaking, we are looking at a time of scarcity. Frankly, nobody in our history has seen anything quite like this before. And what we need to do right now is we need to protect what you've worked so hard to earn. And that means that this is not the time to be spending. This is on things that you don't need. Of course, we make some exceptions for paying your rent or your, um, buying groceries and medicine for your kids or yourself. But right now, we need to hunker down. And really, when we talk um, proactively, we're talking about building up emergency cushions. And there's a couple of techniques that Canadians can follow. Of course, they can have savings accounts. Um, you know, if you miss that boat, uh, there's you know, the method that you could use, which is going to your bank and asking for some payment relief. But really, the bottom line right now is now is not the time to be spending on anything non-essential. If you need help, you need to ask, from, ask for help and you need to ask it from sources that are legitimate. So here's one of the things I was trying to communicate in my letter to our readers uh, yesterday. There are a lot of people right now giving advice, paid and free, and some of them are qualified, some are not. You need to be very careful where you're getting advice for your health and for your investments right now, because frankly, no one has seen this, no one has a crystal ball, and we all need to pay attention to those who really know their stuff right now. 
a number of questions as we expected because people are worried. They're worried about their futures, they're worried about their finances, whether they can provide and feed their families. We talked last hour, if anyone was watching, we had a great question about should I dip into my TFSA right now, my tax-free savings account. Why don't we pick up on that question line with a couple of notes from, first of all, from Nancy, Nancy LeBlanc. Uh, if I can, should I still put money in my RRSP at this time? Leslie Ann. It's a great question. Uh, first off, the RRSP deadline to have that money count for the 2019 tax year has already passed. So if you were thinking you would catch that deadline, you're actually not in that window right now. My suggestion right now for the next couple of months is that we focus almost exclusively on shoring up our emergency funds. And that would be utilizing a high interest savings account or money within a tax-free savings account that is not exposed to market risk. What you need to know is if you invest money within your RRSP and it is being invested in ETF funds like a mutual fund, stocks or bonds, you are going to be exposed to market risk. So as the markets, as we've seen, go up and down, you are going to be on that wave. So if you're near retirement, the answer is probably pretty simple. You probably don't want to be doing this right now. However, a really good investment advisor, whether it's in a person or a robo-advisor, will be giving you advice specifically on this matter during this time. The, uh, this is a similar question from Dado, who's able to put money aside every month and in that fortunate position, but the same kind of a thinking, should I stop contributing and keep the cash in my piggy bank? Again, I just think it bears reminding cash is king at this time, and, and you're encouraging us to do that 20 to 30 percent. Any particular strategies for how we can build up the cash, whatever amount we have available to us, Leslie Ann? So the, the top tip here is if you have predictable income in the coming months, you should be taking 20 or 30 percent of that money and putting it into a high interest savings account. This is not advice that would um, that is prolonged. We always want to be saving and investing for our retirement. Um, but at this particular time in the market, cash is king and emergency funds, that cushion that we're looking for is what you want to focus on building up. Again, we will return in short order to more traditional um, paced and measured investments where we're contributing on a monthly basis. I'm not suggesting that you stop those contributions. But what I am suggesting is that in addition to your regular contributions, that you are also putting a significant amount of your predictable income into something that is a high interest kind of savings account or an emergency fund. You know, if you haven't been building up an emergency fund, it's a, it's a very difficult time to just start in on one right now, isn't it? It's, uh, if you've been ignoring those lessons, it's, it's tough to just jump right in. But part of it, uh, I would think is, I mean, you have to face the facts of what money you have. So is, is a good place to start, Leslie Ann, just take a look at the numbers and just confront them head on what your economic reality is? Yeah, and there's actually a very physical exercise that you can do right now, which is literally and figuratively lay all your cards out on the dining room table. What you want to do is you want to figure out how much money you have in all of your various accounts and how much you owe. Uh, this is a the determination of your net worth, where we figure out what you have, what you owe, and then what is your bottom line. The idea with this is to face the truth, the money reality that is yours. The second thing here is the only way we will need, know if you need additional support is if you are very clear and very honest with yourself about, you know, how close am I am I to reaching the end of my credit limits. Here's the other thing you need to know. If you are one of those Canadians who is kind of near the end of their credit rope, there are methods that you can use with your bank to, to reduce or um, be uh, able to get a relief on some of those credit obligations that you have right now. So specifically, if you owe money on a credit card, a line of credit, a mortgage, um, or a personal loan, you can actually contact your financial institution and have a, a discussion with them about payment relief. But to your point, 
point, the only way we would know if you would need that is if you are extremely clear and honest with yourself about what you have and what you owe. That's the starting point. I like that point too, though. Your lenders and the banks, take them off up on their offer to help because they've all said, we're here for you customers. So uh, reach out and see if you can negotiate something. Can I just ask one thing as well? I would think you have to sort of prioritize if money is limited, you have to prioritize your needs. What do you do in terms of, of, of making that sort of a list to determine who gets whatever scarce resources you have? Great question. And honestly, this comes down to your personal value system. Plus, I'm going to add a few pieces of advice here. There are very few things that are essential right now. Paying your rent or mortgage, buying groceries, children's supplies and medication, though that's essential. Everything else, in my opinion, can probably step to the side and fall into a category that we call non-essentials. And non-essentials are things that you can pair back or dial back permanently or just temporarily. So things like subscriptions, um, you know, food ordering services, those would fall into the category of non-essentials. You focus on essentials during a time like this. Now is not the time to be buying large ticket items or small ticket items that fall into that non-essential category. Park those visions of iPads for a few more months uh, down the road when you know for sure that you have stable employment and um, that, that you don't have a lot of debt after this. I think that's really good advice because what I've noticed in terms of my inbox, various stores and retailers from which I've purchased before are now having to have, they're having massive sales, so it's tempting. So essential, what do you need, not what you'd like. It's focus on those priorities. Kimberly Fitzgerald writes about her TFSA. We've talked about it earlier in the morning, but good to return to the issue of the TFSA. She, use it as, she uses it as her savings and wonders, is it still safe? This is her cash backup. Is there something else she should be doing with her TFSA? So Kimberly's question is getting at, should I clear out my TFSA, which is my emergency fund? Here's the bottom line. If your TFSA is your emergency fund and you need to access your emergency fund, indeed, you're going to have to go in and scoop out money from your TFSA. Now is not the time to expose your emergency fund to market risk. So if you had been thinking, well, hey, I might just invest my emergency fund money in the market right now, now is not the time to be doing that because you might need it. So any time we have a short-term need for cash, we keep that money in the form of cash. And traditionally, that's within some kind of high-interest savings vehicle. You can have that outside or inside your TFS. A couple of questions about housing and mortgages. Teresa writes, Leslie Ann, that they've been looking, Teresa T, for a new house since last year. They're still working, but life is so uncertain. It certainly is, Teresa. So she wonders, should we stop looking for now? You've said stop all anything but essentials. Does, does that include the purchase of what is, for most people, the biggest expense they'll ever have? Most experts right now are saying wait and see. If you have a high app appetite for risk, uh, which means that you're comfortable with things potentially going up and down, this could be an opportunity to get yourself a house at a much reduced price point. However, most experts, again, they're saying let's wait and see. We don't know. Here's the challenge for somebody who is looking for a house. If their income dries up, in the next few months, uh, and we've got plenty of stories on that particular subject right now, um, they could be in a position where they're not able to pay the mortgage. So my recommendation is, is hold on if you've got any any indication that your job might be uh, going in limbo, away. In jeopardy. And, and mm -hmm. second question on housing as well from Colleen McLean, and thank you for this one, Colleen. She says her mortgage is up for renewal in June of this year. Should she be looking at renewing now or wait another month or so? I mean, we certainly learned from the big banks that they are deferring mortgage payments for six months for their customers, but no indication of, you know, renewing and rates, et cetera. 
The Canadian banks, the big six, have been extremely clear that they are going to work with Canadians right now to negotiate rates, to make sure that Canadians are able to make payments eventually. This might be payment relief at some point. But if you are looking at a mortgage renewal, my recommendation right now is that you start the renewal process through a telephone conversation start discussing the rates. We may or may not see further changes to the rates. They have come down considerably and we are at historic lows. So if this is you and you're looking at renewing, uh, the time is, is pretty advantageous for you. But if you are in a pinch and you are looking at maybe not being able to pay your mortgage, please do contact your financial institution because they have been very clear that they are going to work with you to make sure you can make your payments. We're getting a lot of questions about banking information, investments um, and insurance. So why don't we jump right in there to Sue Brown saying that she's withdrawing from her private retirement pension. Leslie Ann, should she remove the fund from investments and move it into a savings only account? This is a really great question. And she is among many Canadians wondering, should I be riding this market out? And, and continue to experience market exposure, or should I move the money over into some kind of more safe investment uh, and or a savings account? Here is, is what I can tell you is if you have an investment advisor, they're going to be calling you or they should be calling you in short order to let you know what kind of market exposure you have. If you are, for example, exposed in fixed income, that is bonds, you're not doing so badly right now because the price of bonds have actually gone up. If, however, you are exposed to equities, those are stocks, you are likely experiencing a pull downwards in the value of your portfolio. What I can tell you is that what, what you're talking about right now is called timing the market. Mm -hmm. Nobody has a crystal ball. We cannot tell you, is this the lowest? Is this the highest? Is this the exact right time that you should be moving money over into your savings? But what I can tell you is that when you do have a strong day, and if you are one of those people who is in retirement and you do need cash, you do you might be looking at a situation where you are forced to, to liquidate some of those equity positions to move them into your savings account. Be very careful here. You need to be talking talking to your investment advisor. And again, if you have a robo-advisor, that is an, a, a digital advisor, they should be giving you some advice during this time. And every piece of advice is going to be very specific to your portfolio. You need to crack the books, is what I'm saying, on your investments in order to answer that question, is now the right time to move money over? All right. Let's go to a, a, two similar questions, not exactly the same, that's interesting, uh, from Paul and also one from Timothy Scott. Wondering about the bank. So from Tim, number one, um, saying that their money is in checking and savings accounts with the big banks, and he's wondering mm -hmm. if that is insured and safe and what are the limits. Yes. And then secondly, and sort of related to this, from Paul Perry, who has investments in the major Canadian banks and wonders if his dividends are safe. Okay, so to address the first question, money that is held within the banking account, banking accounts in Canada is covered by CDIC insurance. This is Canadian Deposit Insurance. Um, and you're covered to up to $100,000, which is great news. So if you were one of those lucky people that had money sitting aside, your money is, is, is pretty safe. You do not have that same benefit if you are exposed into the market. So um, basically, if it's not a bank account or a GIC, you have market exposure and you don't have insurance for that. To the second question, which is, I, you know, yes. if you, if you're, um, yeah, if you are a, a shareholder, what I can tell you is, like all in um, advisors right now, I'm keeping my eye on the market. I'm seeing what's happening. Um, so far, the Canadian banks are, are still going to be paying dividends out to their shareholders. Mm -hmm. But my advice here is, please pay attention. Talk to your investment advisor. If there's changes, the banks are going. They, they have to actually tell you. About about those changes. Um, but right now in the market, some of our best uh, quality stocks or best quality companies in Canada are still committing to paying dividends and those dividend rates are still quite strong. All right. So for people who aren't involved in the market, let's get to some, some nitty gritty common sense because people who are 
facing job uncertainty or perhaps have lost their jobs already, but, but let's say people who are feeling in limbo, that they could be um, in a situation coming up where they don't have income coming in. You've talked about saving now 20 to 30 percent, talking about That's right. how spend only on essentials. Everything else is luxury. So give us a list of the kinds of things that you would consider luxury that people can really cut back on. Okay, so if you were out buying food and going for dinners, having coffees, um, subscribing to a variety of fitness services, those would be considered non-essentials. And when we look at the typical Canadian household budget, about 20 to 30 percent of it is going into these non-essential categories. I'd also include, you know, toys for your kids in that category. So we know that the spending in that category is 20 to 30 percent. And what I am suggesting today is that because you are self-isolating at the moment, you really shouldn't be spending that amount of money. And it instead should be going into a high interest savings account. Um, and that would be your emergency cushion. That would be the recommendation. The whole idea here is that if times are good and you still have a job, and I, I use that term relative, uh, if times are better for you than they are others and you're not experiencing job loss, loss, you should be shoring up your savings right now because you might just need it in a few months from now. All right. Michelle Finnegan, uh, who's writing from Waterville in New Brunswick. What do you consider, you talked about looking for high interest savings account. What do you consider mm -hmm. a high rate and where would you find this type of account right now? Uh, great question. And so when we look at high interest savings accounts, we're looking at an interest rate that's over one and a half percent. The, I mean, it, a few weeks ago, the top end of the high interest accounts were coming in around 2.4%. Um, and the way to look for these is, my suggestion is use one of our comparison websites in Canada. Uh, there's a number of them. I'll, I'll give you an example, ratehub.ca. We'll actually line all of these savings accounts up for you. They will compare with you all the various offerings, but again, high interest, we're looking over one and a half percent. Some of those are from the traditional big six banks, but then there's other non-traditional or digital banks um, that are offering those rates. And, and you really should be considering those. Could I just jump in on this? Because with our team, we were talking about this just the other day. And uh, there is another source that you mentioned. It's called the Canadian High Rates Savings Account. That's another website. And it cites 15 of those alternative banks you reference with 2 mm -hmm. to 2.3%. So there are, as you mm -hmm. said, comparator sites online which could guide but when we're talking about high rates again to be safe two two to three percent perhaps we could be looking at i want to go to a question from sydney cindy writing to say that she has monthly investment money automatically withdrawn from her bank account and it goes into mutual funds through her financial advisor do you think that uh, it would be wise to discontinue those automatic withdrawals or should you continue or, as I said, put a temporary stop and just to shore up the cash during this time? So the answer is, is pretty straightforward. If you have sufficient emergency funds set aside already, so that would be about three months worth of your monthly expenses, then please go ahead. You're welcome to continue those investment uh, contributions. And in fact, you'd be taking advantage of some of these market dips, which means you're going to be buying low um, and eventually hopefully selling high uh, in retirement. Um, if, however, you are not in that position where you don't have secure emergency cushion of about three months worth of your replacement salary, you probably should pause and shore that up first before resuming. Leslie Ann, I can't thank you enough for answering the questions this morning. And uh, uh, one of the takeaways for sure from earlier, put 20 to 30 percent aside right now if you can to build up that emergency fund for what may be ahead and essentials only. Anything discretionary, anything non-essential, that is off the table for now. Thank you so much, Leslie Ann. Thank you.